Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru. Today we're going to take a look at using embedded entities with JPA. And this is a little example I recently did for my Spring Core uh, tutorial. And what we had was we had a, a customer object with a, an address attribute on it. And I wanted to take that and add two addresses on it. And we originally just had the address fields on that on that customer object. But we want a typical customer, we're going to have a billing address and a shipping address. So we wanted to split that out and ideally we'd make that an object uh, for, the, for those address properties and make that a common type. So we're going to take advantage of using an embedded JPA object. And switching over to the screen here, we can see I have a class called address annotated with embeddable. So this makes it an embeddable JPA object. Come over here to my customer. I added in two properties and annotated them embedded and one is a billing address and one is a shipping address and by doing this we want those columns to actually be in the customer table when it gets uh, mapped to the database rather than two separate tables so we avoid that the cost of the join when we're working within in the database and I'm going to run this now this is a Spring Boot application we're running a an embedded Tomcat container via Spring Boot. I'm using the 1.3.0 release of Spring Boot. And we can see down in the window there that Spring Boot is coming up. And now I'm getting an error. And this error is complaining about a duplicate column name. Okay, so what's happened is we have two address line ones from these these embedded properties. And this is because of the, the mapping that Spring Boot uses, there's actually several different Hibernate naming strategies, and the naming strategy that Spring Boot has chosen to extend does not handle embedded properties, but there is another Hibernate naming strategy, and like with most Spring Boot properties, we can go override it. We override it by setting this property, the Spring JPA Hibernate dot naming strategy, and you have to get the, the fully qualified class name in the properties file. So this is in the Spring Boot prop application properties file. And we're going to use the default component safe naming strategy. And by adding that, now I can start it up. And now we can see that Spring Boot did start up normally. And I'm going to switch over to Chrome where I have the H2 database console up. So Spring Boot 1.3.0 did come in with the, the pre-configured database console. It runs at the H2-console. I'm going to connect to the database and take a look at that customer table. And this is a table that was created by Hibernate. And now by using the different naming strategy, we can see that my two addresses have been prepended with the the property name. So I have billing address, and then the, the property name of the class, or the, the property inside that embedded class. So here's my billing address, that's one embedded entity, and here's my shipping address, and this is the other embedded entity. So th those correspond over to the code. I'm gonna toggle over here to customer. So see I have billing address, shipping address, toggle back, a billing address, shipping address, and then these are the properties within those within those objects. This is a real easy workaround. You could use JPA annotations to override the column names. It, it's going to be quite a bit of annotation code in your class. Uh, I've I've been using this. I don't see any uh, problems using this other naming strategy. If you own the database and want to avoid writing a bunch of annotations, this is a real handy way to go.